council must have a leader now. Complete the right so I can kill this Kavida. You will die slowly. Duras. Hello everyone, welcome back to Fully Functional, a TNG podcast. I'm Maggie, joined by Jeff and Dory. Yo. Jeff and I are huge Star Trek nerds, and Dory is a Star Trek novice, and we are taking her on her first journey through Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, today we'll be discussing the Season 4 episode, Reunion. Original air date, November 3rd, 1990. And uh, we'll take it to Dory for the recap. There's a high, yeah, there's like an 85, 95, 90, 99% chance I'm going to start crying during this recap. <sighs> we just finished the episode literally minutes ago, mm-hmm. and <laughs> I'm destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is... A the investigating like radiation abnormalities reported in the I don't know a fucking other system I can't <laughs> <laughs> uh, some like starship LaSalle whatever nobody cares about them whatever who cares and then like there's a Klingon ship and it's like oh hey and then we are reunited with Ambassador Kalar, and I was so fucking happy because I am a big fan. So happy to see her. She's incredible. She's amazing. And then they're like, two to beam up. Oh, oh, but this time, you know, it's funny. I think this was like what happened in her last episode where uh, Picard's like, uh, Worf, go pick her up at the... Um, and he, Worf's like, uh, Captain, uh, about that, I like to speak to you. And I think last time it was like, we have like a history. Yeah. And at this time it was like, uh, yeah, I don't want her to like feel offended because of my stuff. And I think both times Picard's like, will that like interrupt your work? And he's like, no. And he's, she's, he's like, okay, well then go. So then it's like to do energize. And then like we see a child and I showed it's not Worf's worst nightmare. It's Picard's. <laughs> And this kid's name is Alexander, and he's so cute. He's in, like, mm-hmm. a little blue jumpsuit. And Kaylor's hair looks incredible. Ugh. And she, what, her and Worf are going there. Oh, she brings um, Alexander, who I'm just going to call Alex, Alex to, like, the kids, I don't know, daycare. It's like the, yeah, daycare uh, or school or whatever. Yeah, and... So they're, they're looking and then she's like, not even a bite on the cheek for old time's sake. <laughs> Still sassy. Uh, she's the best. And then like, Worf's like, oh, you hear about my dishonor. She's like, Worf, I don't fucking give a shit. Like, it's, I don't, it's nonsense. And then like, yeah, Worf is totally Alex's dad, like 100%. But like. Hundo. Yeah. Hundo P. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so basically, she's there because there's, like, two Klingon factions that are, like, trying to seize power. So it's basically, like, civil wars, like, about to start. And um, when Klingon wars happen, like, they tend to bring everybody else in it, too. Mm -hmm. And so only Kempak, who's the head of the council, has been able to maintain peace and he wants to speak with Picard alone in his cruiser. And so, um, as it turns out, Kapek is being poisoned with small doses of Viridian, no, Veridin 6 in his wine for months. Which he also continues to drink the entire time he's there with Picard. So, I don't know. I guess he's like, I'm in it to win it at this point. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. like, I might as well enjoy the wine on my way out. Like, it's like he died doing what he loved. Yeah. Being poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking poison wine. <laughs> so uh, basically, he's decided that, like, he needs Picard to, like, basically, like, do shit on his behalf to arbitrate, like, the 
power struggle that's happening right now between the two groups. And I'm just like, this is wild because like, I feel like Picard is not the right person for this because he has a history in it with one of the guys because it's Doros and this other guy named Gowron. Gowron, yeah. Gowron, whatever. And so like this really feels by like this should this is not the right choice. I mean, I get there looking for an outsider and he's like, you've got a lot of experience in mediation. But like Picard fully knows that Duras is a piece of shit. So like, I don't know. But Picard, I guess, is still like, I guess I'm still going to try to like do this objectively. But um, also he's like, by the way, I'm totally being murdered. So you also have to figure out my murder mystery while you're doing this power um struggle shit so just in case you didn't have enough to do i'm gonna give you another project oh yeah so they're like oh so the klingon who kills without showing his face has no honor and could be capable of anything um even war with the federation so then okay so we have alexander he's so cute he like knocks down a bunch of the blocks and like growls at the other children (laughs) (laughs) it's so cute um so Worf is like uh come with me maybe like let's not (laughs) bully the children (laughs) yeah (laughs) he's not really bullying him but he's like he's like there's no honor in like fighting the weak and he's like but i would have (laughs) won it's like lol alexander (laughs) so like alex is what they walk down the hall he's asking a bunch of questions there's like a i remember like specifically one guy who just kind of looks at them is like huh okay and it's so cute. He's asking all these questions and like, why are you the only Klingon here, et cetera, et cetera. And then he's like, Alex, he's like, you ask a lot of questions. Like warriors don't ask a lot, so many questions. And Alex is like, yeah, I'm not really interested in being a warrior. And then like Worf is shook. Yeah. Worf is like, the fuck? It's so cute. You and take then, that um, back. Yeah. <laughs> so then Worf brings Alex to like Kaylar's room, Kaylar's room and I really like that she's like yeah like he is like mostly Klingon but like she's half human so she's like I want him to figure out his own identity I don't want to push stuff on him like yeah he'll can learn shit which is like very similar to like how to my opinion of how like Worf was raised yeah <sighs> which is oh my god I'm gonna lose my mind <laughs> we'll get to that later <laughs> oh my god um she's a great mom (laughs) but she also like she didn't want to tell him that they that like he had a kid because he's so like traditional that she like they want to get Klingon married and (laughs) Worf's like yeah that's fair (laughs) but he also can't acknowledge Alex because then he'll be like on the dishonored family tree for for the record Alex (laughs) is literally never what he's going to be called it will a hundred percent always be Alexander I don't care. I'm just calling him Alex. Yeah. Well, Do I ever call anybody wrong. by their prop? I don't care. I always oh, okay. call everybody by their wrong names. All right. Fair. Why should this be any different? <laughs> yeah. I also find that like a little kid being called Alexander is just like very formal. And he seems like a little bit too fun to be called Alexander right now at mm-hmm. this age. When he's older, can oh. be. This will also be the last time that this particular actor ever plays Alexander. Well, I assume he gets older, so... <laughs> Yeah. So that that's that's fair. Yeah. This kid apparently just wasn't good at it. Oh no, I thought he was adorable. I liked uh, him. The problem is like when he was actually acting, apparently he was a bit too shy and that really didn't work for what they were trying to do. Um mm-hmm. like when they tried to work with him again, so they just they ended up getting another actor in the future. It it's ba- like you basically can't tell. So mm-hmm. it's okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so then, like, the two ships arrive, and they're like, okay, we've got to do the ceremony on, um, Kempex vessel, and Picard's like, yeah, listen, like, we're gonna be real, we're gonna be a bit late, and listen, Worf, I know this is gonna be rough, but, um, you're gonna have to just sort of be cool with a lot of things real quick. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and then Worf's like, listen, um, can I speak freely? Doros' piece of shit should not leave. He's not wrong. No, he's not. He's not. And Picard points out that Doros should not be held responsible for his father's, like, crimes. But he does do a crime. He, like, lies. So he should have to suffer that consequence. And then Picard reveals that Kempak was murdered. And Worf is, again, for the second time this episode, shook. Mm -hmm. So Worf says uh, Gowron is an outsider who challenges the council a lot. Like, 
doesn't really know him but he like fuck Dorok Doros he sucks he doesn't have the heart of a Klingon and then now we meet Gowron and holy shit that <laughs> man is intense yeah. those eyeballs that is like wow that is that's just an intense bulging eyeball look so then I guess this like <laughs> the ritual is they take a stick and poke <laughs> Come back to make sure he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> I think stick. it's a it's a pain it's, stick. Yeah, so I get, get well that bit's done, and then there's an explosion, and two Klingons are killed, and then there's like minor injuries, and then Worf goes to see. Well, oh no, he he's already visiting. Um, uh, Kalar tells him that information, um, and then he's like, "You were right." Um, I would have insisted that we take the oath, but not just because of the tradition. I'm like, oh my god, this is so sweet. It's also because I love you. And they basically, they're like, oh, they're so cute. And just like, oh my god, like they want to be together, but like they can't really do it right now. Well, and then, well, I know it's like Worf has got. They can. Worf is. Worf. Yeah. Oh, that's the same. Yeah. Like, they want to, but the other hand, Worf like is not going to do it because he's got the honor thing is like a big deal and yeah this is one of those times where i I think i mentioned before that like i've realized that one of the reasons i did not like uh tng wharf is because i don't agree with his decisions this is one of those ones that i definitely don't agree with yeah i i don't agree with this he should have just like him and kalar and alex just like well, if they're allowed families on the freaking Emperor Enterprise, then just like they stay on the Enterprise, and then we just get Kalar all the time, mm-hmm. and that would be amazing. Yeah, but she likes her work. She doesn't want to retire. Well, then okay, but then we just get, but she they get married, then she stays in the show. We get to see her more, and I don't know, I don't know. They'll figure something out. That's not. I don't have to decide that. I don't have to make up a plan for them. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. So, um, yeah, then she's like, if you can't be uh, Alex's father, then like you can be his friend. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm just I'm going to lose my mind. (laughs) That was a very good one. Yeah. And then Picard is like, "Uh, we need to like buy more time. So like, let's do the fucking long version where you guys like list your resumes of your accomplishments and shit. Your Klingon resume. Proof who. Yeah, of who is, like, more qualified to run the thing. And then, like, Goron and Gowron and Doros are, like, not Goron. happy about it. But then, like, <laughs> whatever, Gowron, whatever the fuck his name is. Oh, should I just call him Eyeballs? No. <laughs> you you actually can. That is, like, a very defining feature of his character for the rest of his tenure on Star Trek. Well, oh, I boy. mean, it is a very defining feature of his face. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes, it is. <laughs> So then, like, Picard sits on his chair, like, with a, like, entertain me bitch face on it. Yeah. It's great. So, like, Alexander is in, in, like, Worf's room, and he's, like, showing him stuff. And he's, like, this is, this weapon is actually an extension of yourself. It's cool. And then Gowron is, eyeballs, is, <laughs> <laughs> it goes to, he's, she's, he's trying to bribe uh, Kalar, but, like, she's not, she's not bribable. Mm-hmm. And she gives him the ultimate burn. She tells him, "You talk like a Ferengi." That is a pretty good burn. <laughs> yeah, it was like snap. So then they learn that the oh yeah, he like offers her a place in the council, but she's like, "You can't buy me, bitch." Mm-hmm. So it turns out the bomb was tiny, and there's like specific shit on the detonator, and it's like only the Romulans use that. <gasps> Gasp! And it's like maybe the Romulans and the Klingons are trying to become a power couple of groups i don't know whatever i actually don't entirely agree with the way that they did that because like klingons have explosives they didn't need to use romulan explosives to do this they just it it was the the detonator mechanism that was romulan technology i know i know but like realistically they're klingons they would have some pretty damn good detonators well the thing is is like they probably don't have like sneaky shit like that Okay, maybe. Because, like, that's the whole point of, like, the Klingons aren't sneaky about it. They would just blow you up. But then they then they talked about how uh, going and, like, suiciding uh, yourself to go take out some enemies is considered honorable. So, like, they're a little inconsistent about it. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. 
Um, so then, like, Picard is like, Worf, you're going to come into the next meeting because it will be disruptive. And it is. So Kalar, like, wants to, like, hear about the last time they were at, like, the Klingon main planet for, like, the la- when Worf got excommunicated. And she uh, she can't listen to the personal logs, but she'll listen to, like, the officer logs. And then... Oh, yeah. Okay. So then, like, Doros doesn't want Worf at... Oh, okay. So then they're like, oh, okay. So, like, you guys did your investigations on the bombs and... And they were like, nothing that interesting. It was like this detonator and that's it. And they're like, well, it's a good thing we fucking did our homework, you dummies. Mm -hmm. And it's a Romulan detonator. And it's like, gasp. So then Kalar is off, is still doing her detecting. And I wrote in my notes, she should have her own detective show because she's just like (laughs) investigating. And she's like learning about the stuff and learns that like Doras is the one who like put the, I guess, record of the stuff with Worf's dad like on restricted or whatever yeah he's the one that so, sealed it yeah so she's trying to uh get more information but then Doros finds out and um he's like I, he wants to go talk to her but he tells his guard his guys like you go distract the guard and the guy does this by like walking out Mm-hmm. it's like the easiest distraction yeah so then he goes to confront her and she's like don't play the wounded Klingon for me Doris you don't do it very well then we cut to Dr. C she's trying to figure out the trajectory of the bomb and turns out uh, it was an explosion from the forearm of Doris's guy so Worf is then like walking uh, with Alex to bring him to Kalar's room and is like talking about the transporter room and some shit and then like they open up the door (laughs) and (laughs) and there they are okay so (laughs) I can't help it (laughs) so then (laughs) I hate this so much. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to try to just, like, say it quickly. Um, Kalar's been stabbed a fuck ton of times and is fucking dying. And Worf goes over and is, like, holding her in his arms. And he's, like, um, Gowron. And she's, like, no. And then she takes... Um, Alex's hand and puts her hand in their hands on Worf's and then she dies and then Worf um uh roars I I remember from the episode with the other Klingons that they do that when someone dies then like over by the door Worf is like you have to like you don't know death but you need to like see it and then like Dr. C comes in, but then, like, Worf just, like, is so distraught and upset that he just, like, leaves Alexander. (laughs) Just, like, standing there by himself, watching this, like... Dr. C goes, like, tries to see if there's anything she can do. Oh, it's awful. (laughs) It's so sad. Kaylor was the fucking best. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so yeah, she's like a bunch of, she's been stabbed like multiple times in the the chest and the abdomen and Worf is like fucking pissed and he goes to get his, his like weapon thing he showed, um, Alex earlier and just like throws his badge on the floor and just goes over to Doros's ship and like confronts him and then they fight and then like Riker Data and some guy go to the ship to like stop Worf, but then Worf fucking kills Doros. I didn't think he did it. Like, I didn't think he was really gonna do it because, like, the way that he stopped when he was like stabbed, I thought he was like, oh, like, oh, like he s- stopped last minute, but then you see it change to like that the shot changes and he fucking killed him. Mm-hmm. Like, Worf kills Doros. Yep. And I guess, like, it's pretty clear, like, yeah, Doros killed Kalar, and, like, I can't, man, it, so, um, that was pretty shocking. Did you think this is where Star Trek would take you today? 
no no <laughs> it was pretty shocking honestly i i couldn't believe all that just like happened and then uh because of like klingon tradition um warf is like technically in the right because doras killed kalar and i also don't really know. i guess doras maybe killed kempak too we don't really they don't really say anything well, we also don't know who the fucking leader i guess gowron is now the leader of the high council we know nothing's yes. really clear everybody kind of pieces out well yeah I mean, that, that's correct. the whole yeah that's the whole implication is that because duras was working with the klingons he's the one that killed uh Kimpek, and now that yeah. he's dead there's no other challenger except gowron so gowron is the leader of the klingon high yeah. council now well what a twist i guess yeah. And then, um, so Picard's like, listen, yeah, you're in the right in terms of, like, you're clear from, like, the Klingon side, but, like, in his opinion, yeah, that was a little fucked. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he says that, like, Kalar was, like, admired by everyone, and I'm like, yeah, no shit, she was the fucking coolest. And then, yeah, uh, Worf's gonna stay on the ship and shit, and then... They're, oh yeah because then Picard's like you know you could probably like do something now about like your dad's innocence because Doros is the one who was like holding that shit and now he's gone but but then Worf's like well too many other people in the high council knew this and like didn't do shit and if I say something now then like nobody's gonna admit it because it's all so many people will be like dishonored or whatever and so then Worf I mean, goes to correct, see Alex sadly. yeah and so then like Worf goes to see Alex and he admits he's like yeah i'm like totally your dad and um then he's going to send alex <laughs> this is a nice thing <laughs> alex is gonna go live with Worf's parents on earth so he'll have a really nice he'll have really nice parents <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> when i'm uncomfortable with like crying i laugh a lot so that's it also that was like <laughs> the whole time I'm crying I'm laughing too because it's uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, at the very least, like Alex will get to still stay in Worf's life and he'll be with Worf's awesome parents and um, he'll hopefully be able to get justice for his family one day and um, then Worf holds Alex's hand <laughs> and then he hugs him and then I fucking lost him. <laughs> I just was like... <laughs> Cool. <laughs> this, been... oh, this has been an episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I really like this episode, <laughs> even though yep, it's such a bummer. Um, yeah. I don't appreciate them fridging uh, Kalar, but it. Yeah. It, it's still I still like this episode she was truly the fucking coolest mm -hmm. and she only got cooler in this episode yeah and it fucking sucks the way that she died yeah I, I would I would argue that the reasoning that they went for it for like why they did it is it's pretty good motivator um and they use it really well oh yeah but that but that's the whole trope is like killing a woman to motivate a man yeah, but I think in Worf's case, it makes a lot more sense because he is, like, the most emotional out of everyone on the ship. Mm. Um, and, I mean, could you really think of another way that they could think of to have Worf do something like that? Oh, yeah. They could kill the kid. Not in this. Uh, okay, yeah, fair point. But, I mean, that's just as much of a trope. Oh, yeah. I know. Um, it, actually, the original... we don't original... know, like, the... We don't know the kid. <laughs> That's true. the The original story idea that they had actually was not that Kalar would be killed. It's mm -hmm. that Kalar was dating Duras, and Ew. that that got shelved because they were just like, "Yeah, this doesn't she really work for this never. character." But also, it wouldn't be enough motivation. Yeah. Like, Worf is jealous, but not I'm gonna go murder you, jealous. Yeah. Yeah. But did they need to murder Duras, is the thing. Yes. I mean... He's Duras. He deserved to die. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, like, they could have written the story where he doesn't have to die. And Kalar doesn't have to die. No, he's he's a murderous Patak. He needs to <laughs> die. 
He could have, like, okay, here's the easy thing. He could have gone after Worf, and then Worf kills him while they're fighting. Nope. Nope. This is the only way. Sorry, yeah. Maggie. Either way, like, I, I I don't mind it. I'm just I'm just saying that, like, it is it does fit the trope, and it kind of sucks because Kalar is such a cool character. Yeah. I think they made good use of it, all things considered. Yeah. Also, we got to hear um, Robert O'Reilly say, Duras. Yeah. I just, I love his pronunciation of everything. It's so over the top, and it works so well with his, like, really exaggerated facial expressions. Mm -hmm. He's such a fantastic character, and I'm so glad that we get to see more of him now. This is an episode of so many firsts. It's the first time that we see... Uh, that that we see Gowron. It's the first time that we see like a new Klingon ship since the fucking movies came out like a decade ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the um, uh, fuck, what's it called? Uh, it's the first time that we see a Batleth. It's the first time we meet Alexander. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of firsts here. There's a lot of like Klingon establishment this episode. Is it the first time we see a Batleth? It is. It oh, is. Oh, wow. Okay. It might not be the first time we see it because there's a possibility that it showed up in the background of some scene, but we don't mm. see Worf's quarters very often. But it is definitely the first time that it is mentioned, talked about, or used. Okay. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Also, <laughs> Worf uh, being a little too casual with that super sharp blade right next to his son's face. No, nah, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, because, uh, man, this this episode sets off a lot of uh, things that happen in the future. Yes. And uh, I love the whole relationship development between him and Kalar. I mean, just in general, they they made great use of everything that they had to work with in this episode. This was actually... Um, uh, Jonathan Frakes second time directing and oh man did they hand him a fucking banger to work with because holy shit <laughs> oh yeah I noticed that that he was the director of this episode mm-hmm. oh I did not notice that mm-hmm. hey that's okay it, it's Good easy to miss him, though. Yeah. it's also the first episode that was officially written by Brennan Braga who oh. for better or worse is a major contributor to Star Trek for the rest of uh, the next 15 years yeah well, that's the thing. Brennan Braga, he, like, he was good at individual episodes, but he sucked as a showrunner. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. Uh, there isn't really anything more that can be said about him this early on, unfortunately. Like, it's clear that there was a reason that he became as prolific within um, uh, w- within the, the crew as uh, he did, because he just kept hitting, out, uh, hitting it out of the park uh, throughout TNG, and we'll see his name quite a few more times as we go through the series. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he doubled up on doing this episode with uh, Ronald D. Moore, who uh, is well-known in um in ds9 but also he was kind of fondly referred to as the klingon guy for a long time <laughs> uh, yeah 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 <laughs> yes how are you doing dory are you alive i don't know <laughs> i don't know i think we just like went like literally i finished the episode and then like with within five minutes started recording so okay it's just all very fresh i think <laughs> still like, processing you know, yeah, like even when even with when Tasha died, I had like I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes something <laughs> like, like I had a little bit of time so I was able to like calm down. When we started recording this episode, I was still at like the tail end of like the crying from the watching the episode. <laughs> oh yes. So like it was still residual tears. <laughs> So this is just very fresh Mm -hmm. and just like spent the whole episode being like, oh, my God, I'm so happy she's back. She's the best. I love her. She's the greatest. And then she gets fucking killed. Yeah. (laughs) So that fucking sucked. (sighs) Yeah, I really hate that. Like, we don't get we're not going to get to see her anymore. Um, We'll get to see (sighs) Alexander more eventually. Yes. Yeah. But (sighs) he's no her. Yeah. And he never will be. <laughs> I hope you're okay with that. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to be. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I remember 
when you're doing the prediction for another episode, I think it was the bonding where it's like, oh, mm-hmm. Worf has to take care of a child. And it's, and you were like, well, you know, I'll, like, obviously he's not going to like, just stay on the Enterprise. Imagine if Worf had to just deal with a child for the rest of the series. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that about would that. be weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I did like that you were right about predicting that uh, Kempek was going to die, though. Yeah. yeah, I was pretty accurate mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. most part. In yeah, not bad. Predictions. I mean, you did not predict that it was going to be Kalar coming back, of all things. But uh, mm-hmm. you had no reason to expect that that would happen. So. Oh, my gosh. Although, okay, you guys, though. We do have to acknowledge um, the return to boy corner Mm -hmm. because we got two the boys, the boy uh, (laughs) mentions in this episode (laughs) referring to not Wes, but Alexander. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was a nice little revisit. (laughs) There's like a lot of things come like a lot of recurrent things came back this episode. We had uh, Doros, we had Kalar, the council and the boy. (laughs) Yeah, the boy. <laughs> I really liked the way that they danced around that Alexander was Worf's son. Like, I thought it was, like, kind of realistic that they wouldn't, like, you know, straight up say it or acknowledge it. And then, like... Well, yeah, I guess till the end. Yeah, then you have that moment at the end where he, like, he finally says, says the words. Yeah, I also, I really like that him not like initially admitting that he's his son not because like oh he doesn't want him it's because of the honor thing Mm -hmm. it's not like oh he's not my kid because i like i don't want it like he's not whatever he's like fully like oh yeah that's like probably my kid but like i can't like declare him because it'll only have negative consequences for him Mm -hmm. and i really liked that was like different than so many other stories you see on tv of people not wanting of like a surprise return of someone who had this person's child but like they won't admit it Mm -hmm. but so this was like a nice take on it and yeah because i think that like one thing like we know Worf is like he's way too honor bound and responsible for for him to be that way yeah and it's wild to think Worf's a dad yeah (laughs) (laughs) And I did love the idea of, like, Kalar traveling around, being an ambassador, and, like, Alex just going about with her, and Mm -hmm. them just, like, doing stuff. But, like, also, how old is he supposed to be? He looks like four or five or something, but, like, how long ago So So here's the thing. Uh, Klingon ages is not something that they deal with particularly reasonably throughout Star Trek. They kind of pick Alexander's age based on where they think they want the story with him to go next. And so it's Mm -hmm. not entirely consistent. So don't worry about it. By the time that Alexander is an adult, he's about nine years old. The end. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wild. Man, I really like the pacing of the episode was really good. Like everything just kept going. Mm -hmm. There was no like extra crap. There was no like lagging. Everything just like kept I I really like this episode despite the ending (laughs) I mean it did an excellent I would say that this episode used every moment of itself really strongly there were some problems with the amount of concepts that it introduced as you already brought up Maggie and that it doesn't entirely resolve all of them Mm -hmm. that well but it also lets those concepts fall by the wayside any uh, anyway because it's very much trying to say these are not that important yeah i do feel like they maybe like for the amount of like shit that like picard had to do and they they all had to do leading up to like who's gonna be the new like leader and then like it's basically like yeah i like you just have to like figure it out there's no like declaration it's just like well Doros is dead boy Mm -hmm. like there's no like for all the shit that they had to do there's no like well Gowron I guess you're uh, the leader now there's no like proper declaration it's just like a well he's dead so boy yep yeah it's it's like it feels like there should have been more like because they were so obsessed with tradition and then nothing happened (laughs) There's no ceremony to, like, 
oh, bring yeah. him in and or like declare him the leader or, any, or anything. He's just yep. I guess he'll just go celebrate on his own time that he won due to murder. Yeah. I mean, what's wrong with that? I mean, I'm not sad that Duras is dead. I do wish Worf didn't kill him, though. Mm, it becomes a pretty necessary part of Worf's character arc throughout his uh, tenure in TNG. So yeah. I think you'll appreciate it over time. Yeah, I always feel like kind of like unsure how to think of like when people kill somebody as like for revenge for somebody doing something to one of their loved ones mm. mm-hmm. I-, I always have mixed feelings about that because like on one hand like i get it but on the other hand like i mean in Worf's case there's like basically no consequences so like Worf got to kill doros and he's fine but I was listening to a podcast recently where they talk about this guy killed um, his son's, like, abuser. And he, like, ended up going to prison. And, like, because he, I mean, he, yeah. And that was, like, somebody harmed his child. Yeah. And so, like, I don't blame him for, like, reacting that way. But then the ki- the son was, like... Now he gets to, like, live a life without his dad. His dad is, like, in jail. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I have, like, mixed feelings. So, like, with Worf, yeah, he gets off with, like, no consequences. And I'm not saying what he did was, like, the wrong decision by any means. Um, I think it's just, like, I don't know. How I... Yeah. I mean, I, I, th- I think you're supposed to feel conflicted about it. I mean, that's why Picard, like, chews him out and stuff. Yeah, I think it's, like, I have such an idea of Worf, and, like, I love Worf, he's still my favorite, but this, like, adds, I don't know. I think, like, Picard's, he says something along the lines of, like, you have, like, had an exemplary career, but, like, there's, like, a reprimand on his um, record, and, oh, yeah, a reprimand will appear on Worf's record, yeah, yeah, Um, and I think that's maybe, like, now, (laughs) like, a little (laughs) bit how I feel. I still love Worf, but, like... I don't know how I feel. <laughs> now there's just, like, kind of a splotch on yeah, now. Yeah, because, like, I, I don't, I simultaneously, like, get it, but also, I don't know. Maybe, like, I think maybe this is just also very, like, just happened. Yeah. In my viewing, <laughs> not obviously, <laughs> like, in general, but um, maybe, like, I'll feel different about it in a little bit of time. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's just so fresh that, like, I don't really know how to... I don't even know how to process this episode right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm fair. Still, like... <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess, like, ev- uh, take... Uh, everything I say in this episode, take with a grain of salt a little bit. It's just very fresh. <laughs> the salt from my tears. <laughs> no, that was terrible. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I feel. <laughs> Lots of emotions. My mm-hmm. emotions. <laughs> oh, there was something that kind of bothered me a little bit. I don't know if I would call this like a flaw in the episode or just them being dramatic or whatnot. But mm-hmm. so this ship shows up with the leader of the High Council on it. Something's very important. This guy's like close to death. So Kalar beams over, doesn't say what it's about right away. Get shepherded around by Worf. It's implied uh, that some time passes in between. And then she gets to the, um, what do you call it? She, she gets to the, the meeting room and tells them, oh, yeah, by the way, the leader of the entire Klingon Empire is over there on the ship waiting for you. And yeah. it's like, that was, um, maybe you should have said that right away. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You probably should have led with that. But, you know, that's how it goes. Mm hmm. So with that, we should uh, should move on for to favorite moments and stuff. Oh boy, there's so many moments mm. in this. Uh, everything with Kalar minus her last scene. Mm-hmm. Her hair looked amazing. That was my my favorite part. <laughs> um, she had great outfits again. Oh yeah, um, especially the maroon one was really great. Or burgundy. I don't know. The color, that's the same color to me. Yeah. Maroon is more purpley. Okay. Well, I still c- can't tell the difference. Yeah. That's all Either the way, same. I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, it was just really nice to 
see her and yeah just truly everything with her yeah rip like she will <laughs> be missed yeah as uh as we say uh may her memory be a blessing <laughs> <laughs> oh god this is just like i think like her be- the best her best line i mean she's so many good lines in this but mm-hmm. her uh burn to uh galron was oh like, yeah that you talk like a frankie that was yeah a plus and i love when burn when he's like you know um you know you'll end up like kimpik or whatever and she's like he was old and weak i am not i like that yeah. that was a pretty good line for me it was actually a bit of a, nis- a misnomer that i i kind of enjoyed um as uh as kalar's dying um he uh fucking wharf walks in and he's just like galron no duras <laughs> but then she calls out alexander and i'm like wait a minute is she implying alexander oh right she's calling for him <laughs> and it's just that split second of like you thought she was a killed her son <laughs> like i yeah. know what happens it's just the 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 string of of con or the way the conversation is going is a little like uh all right all right uh, mildly amusing um <laughs> But yes, uh, honestly, my my favorite actual moment that isn't like a mistake was when Worf exclaims that his presence will be uh, disruptive when when Picard is uh, asking him to join him in the um, in, in the meeting room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Picard just kind of smirks and he's like, yes, it will. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> in that moment. And I loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of my favorite things is when um He's messaging uh, Duras uh, to say, like, hey, we'll meet here in an hour. And then Duras is like, what's the delay? And he's like, there is no delay. That is a time I have chosen. Owned. Uh, I just thought that was really cool. I mean, you gotta shut down people like Duras. Yeah. I mean, Worf shut him down permanently. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I mean, it's yes, just... he, he did. He's like, uh, it's it's a power move, right? Just show, just like really flex that you are the one in charge of the situation. Yes. And also Picard was like, and I'm also going to be late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I really liked from this? I liked when Picard and Kalar were like talking about the traditions of shit. So then, uh, so like she could give him information that would like work. Like So like we're making the, the long version of the service. Mm-hmm. I really like that. Yeah, that was cool. Like her insight. So so it's like, yeah, she knows the traditions. She knows all the shit, but she's like decides whether or not she personally wants to like participate. Yeah. Which I really like. Yeah, I think that's really cool. To me, I don't I don't feel like there's a single wasted scene in this episode. Yeah, definitely not. Like every scene has a purpose. And mm. it's again that lovely thing where the the A and the B plot are related to each other. Mm-hmm. And just like everything intertwines. Everything intertwines and, and you know, and everything like leads to the next. That we know the history with so many of these characters. So I like that they didn't like re explain it to us. Mm-hmm. Which I, I really like. Like they, they treated it like, oh, like, so the listen, like the what, like the viewers will know already. And they didn't have to just, like, I mean, they would sort of do, like, minor little things of, like, well, or if, like, his dad is innocent, blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't like, okay, guys, let's explain the whole fucking thing from last, from that other episode. Mm-hmm. Right, right. It felt more natural when they had, like, brought up from stuff from other episodes. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. It seemed so expositiony. It felt very just, like, if somebody felt- just saying, like, yeah, I had this from that, whatever. Yeah, it felt organic. Yeah, yeah. Well, this episode wrecked me. I was not prepared for that. <laughs> oh, um, boy. All right. Uh, should we <sighs> move on to predictions? Yes. Oh, God. Now right. that I know what this show is capable of, I'm, like, <laughs> nervous. <laughs> well, I mean, you they've killed Tasha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but just, like, I don't know why, but, like, Kalar's death like hits different. I think it's mm-hmm. also for me the way that they just had Alex standing there. Oh yeah, like, his mom just like and Worf just leaves him standing there. Like that really wrecked me. 
It was like this little kid is just standing there looking at his dead mom mm-hmm. and everybody's just like, nobody's doing anything with like t- with him. I mean, like Dr. C is trying to see if she can do anything to help her, or, but like Alexander's just standing there. Yeah. He's just alone. He doesn't know what to do. Ugh, yeah. That, that is really just, sad. Is just like heartbreaking. <laughs> Cause like she's all he's known up until this point. Yeah. But I really hope, I mean, I have, I believe in Worf's parents, so I'm sure he's going to have a really, really nice life with them, Mm -hmm. and they'll take good care of him, and he'll have an, like, he'll just grow up to be a good kid, and I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) I believe in Worf's parents. (laughs) Yeah. They're very nice people. They are. Yeah. All right. So, I guess we will go to predictions now. All right, so the next episode is called Future Imperfect, and Jeff will give you the description. So, Dory, in the next episode, Riker wakes up more than a decade into the future on the Enterprise. It is a very important mission, and he doesn't remember anything that's happened in the last more than a decade. I'm sorry, is Riker me? Like, (laughs) (laughs) wow, is this the most relatable episode yet for (laughs) the show? Um, Oh, okay. God, why was my first thought magic? (laughs) (laughs) That doesn't make sense. Um, Okay. Okay. Yeah, Riker wakes up with amnesia. (laughs) But 10 years in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe, well, Maybe he goes through, like, a wormhole vortex thing. Because we've had a thing with, like, we've had, like, the time shit before. Yeah. When Picard was in his time loop. Um, So maybe Riker, is he on the Enterprise? Yes, he is. Okay. Uh, It was all a dream. (laughs) God damn. Riker ha- takes some, like, so drinks some, like, tea that, like, puts him in a really intense dream <laughs> in which he just shows up in the future. <laughs> um, but maybe at the same time he's in this dream, they go through a wormhole. And so, <laughs> no, that doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, let's go with it was all a dream because okay. I don't have a better suggestion all right. My mind's a little frazzled right now, as I think um, I cried on this episode. So <laughs> not working at like, you know, my usual 30% capacity. So <laughs> uh, let's go with it was a dream. Okay. <laughs> a really intense dream from some really, really intense tea or something. <laughs> like alien drug tea or something like that? Yeah, let's go with alien drug tea. Yeah. All right. Well, (laughs) if you'd like to see if that's right, uh, watch along with us and join us for the next episode of Fully Functional, a TNG podcast. Goodbye.